Hi, how's everybody doing today? Uh, today I want to show you what I'm using currently for my prime lens collection in my camera kit. Um, a, a long time ago, uh, everybody thought that uh, prime lenses were the best, right? Because they had significantly better quality than zoom lenses. Now, um, well, and then after that, uh, camera manufacturers started coming out with some really top-notch zooms and people stopped using prime lenses for the most part. And most people I knew, uh, you know, they were always using zoom. They might have had a 50 millimeter lens in their bag, but otherwise they're always using zooms. Um, now, camera manufacturers again and the, and the third party manufacturers are stepping up the quality of the prime lenses that you can get. Uh, so they are, uh, when you, when measured, you know, and especially sharpness in the corners and uh, you know, color aberrations and uh, coma in the corners. Anyway, all the uh, all the flaws a lens can have. Prime lenses are still substantially better than even the best zooms out there. Uh, if you ever look at one of those lens tests that <clears throat> that that'll compare many different types of lenses, uh, prime lenses are always far superior. Um, anyway. Uh, center sharpness, you know, uh, a lot of the zooms can be about the same, but really the advantage comes into all the way into the corners as well as in distortion. Prime lenses tend to have lower distortion than a zoom lens that has to be a compromise, uh, you know, between a wide and a telephoto or a wider and a longer focal length. Um, anyway, what I have here is the Sigma 35mm 1.4. Uh, this is the new Art Series lens that is a fantastic 35 and uh, I think the best 35mm lens currently for a SLR type camera, or a retro focus design. Um, the, another benefit of the primes, by the way, uh, you know, zooms, the, the best pro zoom you can get is a 2.8. Uh, people that use zooms go, oh, 2.8, it's so good in low light. Well, this is it lets in four times as much light as a 2.8 zoom so we're not even close you can get four times the shutter speed four times the hand holdability uh, without going to vr uh, the 50 nikkor 50 millimeter 1.4 g uh, this is an afs lens and um, uh, i think this is a very underrated lens um, people for whatever reason don't think it's amazing. Uh, I've had the f 1.4 G and uh, from Nikon and this is so much better. Uh, the sharpness into the corners is great. Um, the color rendition is awesome. The the biggest thing with this as well as any 1.4 lens is that Focusing is very critical at 1.4. Your depth of field is so slim. So that AFS motor uh, can really lock on a lot better than the built-in motor in the camera body, than a typical screwdriver lens. It's just more precise. So you get a much higher hit ratio with this one. Um, okay, next one I've got here is the Nikkor 105mm VR uh, micro lens or macro lens. Uh, this is a, of course a macro lens. It's pretty heavy. Uh, it's got VR in it. Uh, it focuses very quickly. Um, people that complain about its focus uh, are using it at macro distances and they don't realize you really should have it on a tripod and manual focus at macro distances. But uh, it's a fantastic portrait lens. It has a very round aperture. Uh, it also on uh, one review site it said it set a new record for uh, edge resolution on a full frame camera. So that's uh, that's pretty incredible. They're very flat field, very good color um, as as macro lenses should be. Only uh, only thing people complain about with this one that that I could agree, but it's also a trade off, is that you have focus breathing. So whenever you turn the focus when you're at macro distances, the image size changes a little bit. 
<clears throat> so if you want to do uh, stacked focus images or anything real serious for macro work, you can just get a focusing rail which actually moves the camera in and out. And that would work, that would work great with that lens. Um, the other thing people say is that it, uh, it's not really a 2.8 lens, a macro distance, well, no lenses. Um, you know, when they focus, when you focus to one to one, you don't get a 2.8. Uh, some camera lenses just don't report that to the camera, so you think you're getting 2.8, but you're not. Um, so that's not even a, that's not even a problem. The 85 millimeter f1.4 G uh, AFS lens from Nikon. I've had all the 85s in recent memory. All all the autofocus 85s, the 1.8D, the 1.8G, 1.4D, and the 1.4G. Um, this is the best so far. Um, you know, I got the 1.8G, and um, the the focusing motor squeaked. The aperture blades were a little bit loose. It was pretty plasticky construction. Uh, if you're if you're not a pro and your gear's not getting heavy use, it's a perfectly fine choice. You're going to get great image quality for the money. But this one is definitely better. Uh, also, you know, people say, "Oh, it's sharper at f/2 than than this one." Um, I don't think it is, and um, or, you know, if somebody tested it, it could be been a sample variation. But this one, to me, is sharper. But that's not even really the issue, because at 1.4, this lens is sharp. We don't really need any more sharpness, especially for a portrait lens. The difference comes in the quality of the bokeh, the background blur. Um, not only between f1.8 and f4, you know, being the reason to use this, but the background blur looks better at f4, looks better at f5.6. It's creamier. It's not just the amount of blur, it's the quality of the blur. This lens is the cream machine. Uh, little nickname. You look into the center of this thing, it's like staring into the eyes of a baby panda. It's ridiculous. So much glass on there. And you'll notice this is the only one I've got a filter on. Um, that's, a big, that's a big expensive element on the front, and it's close to the front. So that's the only one I chose to put a filter on. Uh, but a fantastic portrait lens. The 135 Nikkor, uh, this is the F2 DC. This lens is one of the longest lenses in production in the Nikon line. Um, also a monster piece of glass on the end there. Uh, nice heavy chunk of a lens. It's also very close uh, to the front so you be careful you know when you're handling it or when you're putting the lens cap on. It has a built-in lens hood and also gives the ability to adjust the quality of the blur in front or behind the critical plane of focus. Um, they have a patent on that. There's only two lenses made that do this and that's the Nikkor 105 DC and the 135 DC. The 135 DC is called the King of Bokeh. That's the nickname for it. And I have to agree, the, the blur that this one can produce is is incredible. It's creamy. Uh, the color rendition is different than the 1.4. Uh, 1.4 is a bit warmer. Um, the 135 I think actually gives better skin tones and um, uh, is a bit more neutral but I think even better skin tones. This one uh, I find myself correcting the color in, in Lightroom a good amount. A uh, little, bit, little bit extra warmth. Um, but uh, this one, the depth of field is so small that you have to be really careful um, with your focus. Really, any of the 1.4s and the uh, and the f2, you've got to be really on with your focus. Um, between these three, these three are all fantastic portrait lenses, and I'm kind of duplicating a little bit here. If I could have only one, I'd probably have to do this one, even though it's not the greatest of all portrait lenses it's not far off and it also gives you VR for handhold ability and it focuses fast and it's got a really nice crisp image these are really specialty portrait lenses uh, if you're between something like these two and you shoot weddings and things like that you probably want to do the 85 just because um, of your working distance issue this thing you have to be 
you have to have some good working distance if you're in a tight space in a room or in a limo or anything. Uh, this one's going to be a little more flexible for that. But all fantastic lenses. I'm going to add a, a zoom or two to my collection soon. And uh, we'll talk more then. Uh, I hope I haven't bored you. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, get, out, get out there and shoot some pictures. We'll see you guys next time.